All right, hold on. Let me let me do some more. Real. Hold on. I'm gonna start the live. Hold on, y'all. This this is bullshit. Hold on. Let me. I know our love was meant to be Because our souls touched tenderly Love is life and life is living It's very special Oh, shout out to Deborah Laws My shit gonna glitch out. So I've already started putting. I've already started putting some uh some chips on some of the good soil that I have over here in the garden beds. But um one, two, three, four, five. I gotta work on this soil, that soil. I'm not gonna cover those and I'm gonna wait till next grow season to actually do what I have to do. Right now I'ma just Right now, I'm going to just hoard wood chips and, and make mulch and, and shit. I probably put too, too thick of a layer on this, but you see, this is going good right now. Somebody said you need sunglasses. No, I don't. I don't need sunglasses because the light going into my eye actually recharges my battery. I'm super nigga. Need a cape for me. Real people, they relate to me. Etc. Shout out Jeezy. So yeah, I just planted these like two weeks ago. They're doing good. What do we have over here? Well, I'm not doing nothing. I'm not doing nothing much today. <sighs> Got more Michelle's. And the watermelon, I was hoping something would spawn. But it's getting a little late in the season. And apparently my soil ain't right. So, because you know, watermelon loves um, high drainage soil. So a lot of people mix sand 
in with their soil which i heard you're not supposed to do because right now it's just retaining moisture so i'm not going to cover that with wood chips but what i am going to do is make that the watermelon patch since that kind of comes downhill a little bit so it, i can drain it and i know i'm gonna have to water them often but all of this is going to be over there next year next growth season i ain't worried about it then i gotta work on this soil before i cover it up you see the the kale coming back just fine the potatoes the eggplant good you know check the tomatoes we just came out and harvested a whole bunch of them the butternut squash the lemongrass yo i'm just standing right here by the lemongrass and if y'all could just smell this what i smell right now goodness gracious that smells amazing and i didn't even show y'all this this the celery the one i showed you in the previous live stream from the farmer it's going to look like that not like the the shit you get from the my organic market it's going to look like the official stuff and to be honest i quit i give up on cauliflower and broccoli i'm not going to grow that people be like you need a greenhouse and grow it late in the season no fuck that i can no nah, and i don't even eat that shit a little butterfly what you doing it's dead it's dead bro I thought it was going to go to seed. It's not. It's dead. It's dead. Lettuce heads, etc. More cucumbers. Herbs, basil, thyme. Radish, cabbage. <clears throat> yeah, this kind of going downhill. So, uh things you sing to do divine you look straight into my eye i know our love was meant to be cause our soul touched tenderly love is life and life is living it's very special my fucking lawnmower broke fucking Honda. Fucking you. It, it, it's, it, it's fucked up because neighbors, I know my neighbor heard that shit break. He's a smart ass. He went out the next day. You see him out there chilling on his riding lawnmower. Like, oh, I know you heard that shit. Bro, that joke broke. I can fix it, though. I can fix it. I had the desire to fix it. Until I was on Facebook Marketplace and seen something better. Bigger. Stronger. More powerful faster that you can sit on for a really good price now i need a trailer bro if you went here the guy i was talking to about the trailer <laughs> stop fucking lowballing me i hate to be the lowballing guy but i told y'all i'm an asshole nah i like to help people out though i help people out <laughs> Freedom Inc. said, Jew. <laughs> no, I like to help people. Like Freedom Inc. Stay off of uh, the marketplace looking for a truck. You don't need another truck. I be, I be looking for trucks too. Don't even need it. I just be like, damn. I be scrolling. Be like, damn. He put that out there for a real good price. Like, damn. And it was like, yo, riding lawnmower works great. Come get it. Oh, Freedom Inc., you don't have one, you need one? Shit. 
I was in that same situation. I found my shit on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> Somebody said a Cub Cadet lawn tractor. Hmm. Somebody said hook some blades to the ZJ. That'd be funny. Nah, I need a trailer though, for real. <laughs> for a good price. Because it be people out there selling trailers. They're like, yo, I got a trailer. And you be like, how much? It's a five by eight. You be like, how much? They be like 2000 No, nigga. And then that shit say no title. You be like, I got a five by eight. With no title, how much? Two thousand. But I'll settle for eighteen hundred. No low ballers. Somebody said build one. Eh. The self-reliant as I try to be, I like to pay people that actually know how to do that to do that if that's what they do like fabricators metal workers and shit like that you know that's business i like to support stuff like that and also you can learn how to do things the right way from people that actually know how to do it it's an experience thing i guess you don't need that much experience to do that for a trailer but you know if i had a buddy nearby like yo we could we could fab one up no problem yeah and then too i suck at welding like no no that shit is embarrassing man that shit is embarrassing yeah, I, I'd rather pay somebody that knows what they're doing to actually either come out and do it or I pick one up. Like somebody with a shop, somebody local or some or not like Lowe's or Home Deep, somebody that, you know, pieces it together, that got their own business going, something that I can support that's organic, like natural. But yeah, I need a trailer. And I ain't got time to be sitting here trying to weld and trying to work on my welding skills. Y'all do this. That's what y'all do. You get better with practice. That's with anything. But right now, time is of the essence. Okay? Because I seen that real good price tractor. And that shit's not going to be there tomorrow. I'm pretty sure. He posted the track that he was like, yo, this is the price. Whoever gets it first. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, fuck. Can I put it in the bed? I almost went out and got ramps to put in the back of the truck. Like, nah, I ain't going to do that shit neither. I don't got time for that shit. <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have been in too many accidents. Like weird shit always tends to happen to me like that. I am not suicidal, but weird shit does happen to me. I done been in too many accidents. Y'all be tuned into the, this just in. Barricade garage, his die. Fucking tractor on top of him. How he died? He tried to put it in his truck with ramps that he got from Home Depot. Tim Pool will probably cover that story. That probably be the only time you see me on Ted Pool show. <laughs> this just did. Barricade Garage has died. Finally. Now, he can stop talking shit about me. But before I tell you how he died, I need you to head on over to TimCashRL.com. Fuck that nigga. I actually have a trailer. <laughs> I have 13 of them bitches. It was somebody on there. He had like 15 trailers. I'm like, fam, what are you stealing them? How do you just have like 15 trailers to sell? Like, oh yeah, you get the five by eight, you know, 1200. And I got a five by 10 
1300 then I got a 6 by 12 I'm like nigga what the fuck <laughs> somebody said rent a trailer at U-Haul fuck no fuck U-Haul no I would I would but no no I want a trailer all right this is just down to what i want no i want a trailer nope i'm not renting that shit nope and i'm gonna park it right the fuck there and it's gonna be out of the way if you got space for i got space for it it's gonna be right there out of the way it's not gonna be an eyesore sitting in the middle of the fucking yard You see that shit on the other side of that pile, just behind the shed. Shit, it has a home with me. Nah, no, fuck, fuck a rent. I'm not gonna rent and then and I'm gonna feel fucked up. Gotta return. Like I take you back now. Nah, I'm buying something and I'm taking it home. That's when your family call you up. Like, bro, you got a trailer now, bro. Bruh, you know what? It's funny you just got a trailer because I need to borrow it. You be like, why? Because I got a lawn care business now, bro. When the fuck did you get a lawn care business? When you got that trailer? <laughs> Maybe we could talk about you being my wingman. Maybe. And then I'm always talking shit about family wanting to borrow some shit. And then I thought to myself, yo, if I had a family member or somebody that had a trailer, I'd be like, yo, let me borrow that real quick. So I can go pick up this tractor. <laughs> Damn. All my life is all I have. And your dreams are very special. All my life I look for you and this day a dream come true. You need me and I need you. I don't know why the fuck I woke up with that in my head. And you know, it's like chipping wood. That's a great way to relieve stress. Like just fire up the chipper. And then just start chucking wood in it. You just chuck wood in there. Things you seem to do divine. Like that shit is addictive. <laughs> I know when I get finished my little pile over there, I'll be like, yo, who I'll be back on Facebook while I'm like who got free wood? Yo, who <laughs> who got wood on their property they need to get out? I with the trailer. And go load that shit up. I need a fucking trailer, bro. Fuck that rent shit. Oh, Faith Pharaoh, what's cracking? Somebody said, do you have chainsaws? Yes, I have chainsaws. I ain't talking about nothing today though. I'm chilling. And then it's like, yo, why the fuck? I'm sitting there scrolling, looking for some shit. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, like, why? I'm scrolling, looking for this shit. And I'm thinking to myself, like, why the fuck are trailers cheaper in New York? That shit makes no sense. It was somebody selling the trailer of 5 by 8 with perfect wood for $500. I put in the drive on the maps. That shit says six hours. Like, why the fuck is it cheap up there? 
You can't you can't even find no shit like that down in South Carolina. New York supposed to be more expensive, not less expensive. You look straight into my eye. Somebody said because New Yorkers don't know how to use a trailer. Shit. Upstate New York. I ain't talking about New York City. New, New Yorkers get busy. Not that city shit neither. <laughs> shout out. Shout out the people in New York. The other side of New York. That don't get no air time. Yeah. New, and yet New York beautiful too. Every time they take y'all in New York, y'all y'all just go to New York City. New York City, it just looked like that. I don't understand it, but it looked like that. It's terrible to me. People go there, and they're like, oh, I look at the building. I'm saying, I go to New York, I'm like, yo, take me the fuck back home. I don't belong here. You feel trapped, caged. That's why everybody's on edge. That's why New Yorkers are more aggressive. Because it's like too many people. There's too many people in the vicinity. So anytime you like bump into somebody or you just look at somebody, they're like, what? Fuck is he looking at? You get a hot dog on Coney Island, they're like, yo, you gonna eat that? You gonna eat that fam? When you add me like, what what part of New York you from? Brooklyn, nigga. You be like, damn, bro, calm down, nigga. I'm from Brooklyn. That's why everybody up there talks like Bernie Sanders. I'm from Brooklyn. You wanna eat that hot dog that you got from Coney Island? It be people on Staten Island. They be like, I never left Staten Island before, so I can't tell you shit about New York City. <laughs> people on Staten Island just be like, where you from, Staten Island? They don't even say New York City. <laughs> you be like, where you from, like Staten Island? You be like, where is that though? They be like, the state of New York. You be like, is that in New York City? Nigga, I said Staten Island. Be like, yo, just claim New York City, bro. <laughs> Niggas try to act like Harlem and Manhattan isn't the same thing. Niggas try to act like they can walk through Brownsville, Brooklyn without getting shot. <laughs> and would they say Harlem make it, Brooklyn take it? <laughs> trying to act like everybody in the Bronx isn't crazy. It's the people. When you put a lot of people and just pack them, just pack them in there like sardines. Yeah, people are gonna act like that. There's one, I don't believe people are designed to live like that. How you just live on top? You just live on top of some shit. They took, they'll take you to luxury to luxury apartments in New York City and they'd be like see that you see that right there you'd be like yeah I see that what is that like what the fuck I see it but what is it they'd be like those are million dollar homes you gotta pull out your your little your specs nigga where be like all that right there that's where the rich people stay and you looking at this shit that shit is on top of a bodega a fucking deli a cell phone place you like niggas live on top of this shit they be like ain't this neighborhood beautiful it's trash on the street and bags dogs barking people walking cabs driving by the Uber Eats guy is cussing someone out. You have a fuck. You live on top of a McDonald's, bro. And you paying what? Like, ain't this luxurious? 
and you go in there it's just an open space it's a studio niggas in the south don't know what the fuck a studio is the fuck is a studio fan they be like well it's like an open floor plan or something like that like at my bed over there you be like why the fuck is your bed next to the kitchen that's not even the kitchen it's just an area that has a stove in it and you're paying what to live here nigga niggas be paying like three thousand dollars a month you be like bro you can literally get a mansion in virginia for that you can get a mansion in virginia for that price what do you you don't even have to go to north carolina Then they be showing you the places where like the football players, the penthouse, I can't live in no penthouse. That shit just too far up. They be like, don't you have a nice view? And you look out the window and all you see is other windows. Like, fuck no fam, look at that building, bro. And fuck no, this ain't a nice view. They be like, the view is nice. Charge them an extra 15,000. For what? To look at another building you be dead ass looking at an alleyway you be your shit face an alley <laughs> you're like adjacent you're you're adjacent and caddy corner at the same fucking time they be like this is luxury this is luxury like nigga i look out my window and see brick This ain't this shit luxury, nigga. No, it's not, nigga. Take me back. Anywhere down south. I don't give a fuck where. If you're not going to eat your hot dog, then you need to give it to somebody else that's needy, that needs a hot dog. Everybody needs a hot dog. Fuck Chicago hot dogs. Brooklyn makes the best hot dogs. <laughs> Chicago like, bro, we got pizza and murders, nigga. What's up, New York? <laughs> they be arguing about who make the best pizza, New York or Chicago. I be like, Chicago hands down. Like, you just sitting there eating hot dogs and shit. Like, that's what New Yorkers do. It's a lot of people and they just... They just walking by, you can grab a hot dog. Hey, excuse me, my hot dog. The hot dog is like a hundred dollars. Hey, New York, New York, they better. What y'all putting them hot dogs? Gold. You be like, how much for a hot dog? <laughs> Bro, I'm gonna tell you something. That shit is a culture shock. Did somebody die, nigga? What the? Y'all just gonna keep shaking y'all ass? That shit is a culture shock coming from the south, like the New York. And you're just like, yo, you hand somebody like a $5 bill for a hot dog and they like, bro, you shorted me. You be like, how much? They be like $30. You be like, nigga, I didn't even get a drink. How much do these buns cost? Nigga, my shit plain. No condiments, no nothing. It's a plain hot dog. <laughs> hey, what the fuck going on in New York? I know what's going on, but it's funny to say what's going on. And then people come to America, go to New York and think this is America. Like I said, shout out to upstate New York. Shout out to the rural, not the suburb. I hate the suburbs is weird as fuck too. Like how the fuck I'ma just, bro, I can't, I can't stand when people be like, yo, this is luxury. You know, these are million dollar homes and you step outside and you're immediately in your neighbor's backyard. Like what the fuck? Like, where's my space?
for a million dollars. Like I'm a person. There is no such thing as individual in New York. You be like, fam, I'm an individual though. They be like, fuck your individuality. Live on top of this bodega. Right next to a guy that beats his wife with paper thin walls and we'll call it luxury. You're like, <laughs> but pe people in New York, that's all they know. Jew, Jew, Jersey. Bro, don't get me started on New Jersey, bro. Shout out to the, the other side of New Jersey. But I come from a different time and place than a lot of you. When I think of New Jersey, I think of Grape Street Crips, the New Jersey Turnpike, absolutely no gardens, Trenton, and Newark. Matter of fact, Newark, New Jersey is the last place you see before you head over, before you head in the, in the, in the New York. And, and Newark, New Jersey make New York look luxurious. Newark is fucked up and nobody obeys any traffic signs or anything out there. I haven't really been deep in New Jersey. You know, New Jersey is weird. It's shaped like a peanut, you know? I haven't been on the other side of the peanut, but the side closest to the coast is weird. And like, it's a lot of little gangs out there and shit. And they, and they talk funny. And they, you know, it's cultural. Yeah, it's shaped like a peanut, bro. That shit, shit it just shaped weird. It's weird as fuck. Wooder, soapy Wooder. Yeah, that's how Chris Fix talks. Hey guys, I'ma spray some soapy Wooder on here. You'd be like, nigga, Wooder. But we talk funny down here too, though. So I, you know, but it's funny because we different. But when it come to living situations, no, don't put me in my neighbor's house and then call it luxury. Like you're literally in your neighbor's house. The only thing separating you is a fucking a wall it's just like not even there it's fucked up when you know what your neighbor's kids ate for breakfast that's all i'm saying you like yo they had that bowl he had that bowl of fruit loops and then when he went back to ask for seconds his mom cussed him out they'd be like how do you know that they'd be like well i live two doors down but you know Everybody knows everybody's business, but no one talks to each other. That's how New York is. Like when you get, you know, certain places in the city. Buffalo, New York is the city too. That shit weird as fuck too. It's Buffalo, New York, first of all. Buffalo, New York kind of reminds me of Wilmington, Delaware. Wilmington, Delaware is fucked up. I don't know if y'all been to Wilmington, Delaware, but niggas be like, Delaware? Delaware. What they license plate say? First state? You know, like, oh, yeah, Delaware, cool. Not in Wilmington. Delaware somebody said Gary Indiana is also terrible I'm not even talking oh y'all want to talk about terrible shit well let's talk about Virginia let's talk about Virginia everybody talk about Baltimore DC Richmond Virginia is fucked up since we won't talk about what's terrible <laughs> Just throw the whole Richmond, Virginia, throw the whole fucking capital away. 
and it stinks out there eternally i don't know if it's the water treatment plant it fucking stinks and that local news is depressing niggas die every every 18 minutes out there but i'm like damn unlike new york at least they got space in between houses and shit Newport News, the whole 757, Virginia Beach, Virginia Beach out there, and people think that shit beautiful, Norfolk, Norfolk, Newport News, North Carolina, they polite. But they'll kill you. But they on that grown man shit in North Carolina. North Carolina, where it's terrible at. They're polite. They be like, yes, sir, no, sir. Yes, sir. And a rob the fuck out you. Like that nigga was polite. <laughs> I can't speak on South Carolina. I don't, I never been. I just drove through there. It seems like a nice place to get some land though. Somebody said almost anywhere in California. Fuck California. Well, shout out to California, first of all. But when it comes to living in California, it's the opposite of like the city wise like you know la san francisco san diego uh oakland from the north to the south it's like more spaced out but it's like people be spazzing out people spaz out because it's it like never rains in southern california you need that shit for balance bro and then when it don't rain enough Well, when it does rain too much, like, nigga, you, you still spaz out. That's why niggas in Seattle and Washington just always, it fucking rains too much. You go down south, you go down that shoreline, it don't rain enough. Fucking lawnmower. I never thought I'd see the day when I want a lawnmower. That's when people they used to hate doing yard work. I like well for one, that shit taught me responsibility. And for two, when men get are in neighborhoods, like there's silent competition. Like, I'll be damned if the neighbor's yard looks better than mine. No, that's not happening. There's competition here. Like, we don't vocalize it. It's an unwritten rule. It's unwritten. It's like, no. No. If you see me cut my grass, see him neck that he cut his shit. I'm like, see? See, we put, pre we put the standard on each other. Like, don't nobody want to be, you know. Nah, nigga, do your yard work. Nigga, make your shit. Make it look good outside. Somebody said slow burn. And then just like, he got ride a lot. Like, we, it, it, men compete. <coughs> men compete when you put them in close proximity with one another they'd be like yo this nigga this nigga went he shitting on me he shitted on me and went and got a z mower how come i don't have a z mower <laughs> you know that's what you think in your head and then he's sitting out there with the mower he like yeah i'm mowing this bitch but then when you catch him out there trying to cut the tree limb he got that cheap harbor fright the shit that you throw over and sit there the shit you got to do all that with you sit up there
And I'm sitting there with my pulse all like, ha ha, bitch, gotcha on something. I'm sitting there with the with the pole saw like oh you struggling huh you struggling getting them lit I see him take a weed whacker up there to the sleepy willow tree <laughs> like oh you got a fancy lawnmower but you don't have a hedge trimmer you're doing that shit manually you know, men do shit like that. We, men judge each other's equipment. Like, you may not say, nigga, is that DeWalt? Oh, fuck no. You know, shit like that. You know, men judge each other by tools and equipment. They be like, nigga, that's healthy. I think he thinks he's better than me. He thinks he's better than me. That's what that means. When I see the Walt tools, I'd be like, oh, he, he wasn't serious. He, he just went somewhere because he really needed something real quick and just got something. When I see the Walt tools, I'm like, yo, he, he didn't know where the Harbor Fright was. So he just went. So he just went, you know, and got some the Walt shit just to get something done real quick. That's just like when, when people out there they see they see their neighbor they got a they got a John Deere riding mower and you got this cheap craftsman shit you got a craftsman mower and the deck is rusting away now he just riding on his his John Deere shit. Mm. And you just sitting there like. You got that cheap crash and shit. <laughs> Somebody said Black and Decker just about owns everything. What? What do Black and... Don't they own the Walt too? Somebody said Makita. They, they own Craftsman too? For real? I know Sears... Black and Decker. I know Sears... Didn't Sears like really own Craftsman? And then Sears went out of business. Like, no, nah, don't, nah, for real? Oh, rigid. I'm, you know, I have no opinion on rigid. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, Athlete X, that's where I bought my Craftsman Breaker Bar that I was telling you about the other day when I was trying to get the lug nut off. That what I, you know, it's like, damn. And now the only thing Sears has open down here is that ratchet ass auto center. And everybody's in there. Everybody in there is from Pakistan. Shout out to people from Pakistan, but I'm saying though, like we don't, we legit don't speak the same language. <laughs> I'm like, yo, Sears, like what the, you're auto center. Then they, it's funny when they try to like upsell shit. You know, they, they try to, and it's something about being American. Like you, it's different having an American, you know, when women, Women are always getting fucked over. We know this. It happens. It's true. You feel like that because it's true. You're an easy target. But women don't even take those type of mechanics seriously. Because they try to upsell shit. But they, they have that accent. And it's like. 
No, I'll just have my axles looked elsewhere. Like, I'll have somebody else look at it. They be like, well, thank you for coming. Do you want to, do you know your axle is about to fall apart and then you, you will not make it down the road. You'll have to come back. They be like, nigga, I'll, <laughs> I'll take my chances, nigga. <laughs> Well, thank you for coming to Zero's Auto Center. Can I, how can I help you get your alignment today? <laughs> I was doing your alignment and I noticed that your axle was about to come apart and it explode and the whole vehicle was about to explode going down the highway. So I don't wonder if you want me to go ahead and start on the job. They be like, bro, I'm out, nigga. I just, <laughs> nigga, what? Nigga, no. <laughs> don't touch my shit. I'll find another mechanic to fuck me over. <laughs> Don't women do that shit? <laughs> Bro, you can't up. It's hard to upsell shit when you have that type of accent, that Middle Eastern shit. Like, no one believes you, first of all. <laughs> like, no one's gonna... Like, no. I do not need my fluids topped off, nigga. No. <laughs> Get off my shit. Get back. <laughs> and they try to, they act like they don't speak English. They pop your hood and be like, go ahead and go ahead with the top off. I love you. They be like, yo, they hit you with that shit. Your brake fluid. Fuck that brake fluid, nigga. Back away from my shit. <laughs> Fuck that brake fluid top off. If mechanics, stop doing that shit, man. Like, and it's fucked up because what y'all don't know is it's not the mechanics. It's the management. They tell you to upsell. You have to. It's, if you want to make money, if you're getting commission, like a lot of mechanics aren't paid hourly, you know. Some flat rate. The ones in the lube shop, which you can't even call mechanics or technicians or whatever, they are told to upsell shit. They are told to charge you $150 to top off your fluids for no fucking reason. And if they don't, management has a problem. Like, it comes from the top down. They feel bad when they go in there. They're like, hey, when I was working on your shit, I noticed that your windshield washer fluid was low. Yeah, you got to get that taken care of. If you don't, I mean, it can, like, ruin, you know, the drivetrain. My boss told me, I mean, the fucking, the extra lubrication from... You know, the lack of windshield washer fluid will, like, throw the balance of the drive shaft off, and it can ruin your, your differential. <laughs> if women be sitting there like, oh, oh my, well, go ahead. Well, yes, go ahead and do it. I have, thank you for telling me. They become heroes. Thank you for telling me. Meanwhile, that mechanic can't sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> they be like yo i i stopped being a mechanic you'd be like why i thought they was paying you good at the shop they were but i couldn't sleep the boss came in told me pack this old lady differential filled with sawdust so the bitch come back it's like what he was like yeah the gears were slipping he was like this is the cash just pack it with sawdust and get her out of here yeah i had to quit it be some fucked up shit going on. I'm talking too much. I'm talking. I'm saying too much. <laughs> you see that woman that just came in, Johnny? She came in for a headlight. All right. But what I need you to do <laughs> is sell her a door handle, a new radio. It be body work. It's not even make it be body work. Sell her a door handle, new radio, shift linkage, oil change, more brake fluid. Let's throw in a brake booster too. The bitch need a brake booster. You be like, how you know? It doesn't matter if I know or not. That bitch need a brake booster. Next thing you know, you get a call from your mechanic. You be like, yo, we're we're done. But uh I kind of noticed while I was working on your shit. <laughs> your brake, your brake booster. Yeah, that, that shit is yeah. 
Yes, that shit is ready to explode. <laughs> Something's always going to explode too. It's it's not just going to fail. It's got to explode. This it fail is not sensational enough, nigga. No. No fuck fail. Your your break booster will explode. They be like, "Well, what would that do?" Women don't know. Women be like, "Well, what 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 what, what would be the harm in that?" Women are retarded. They be like, "Well, if your brake booster explodes, that's going to activate the airbag in your steering wheel, and that's going to punch the fuck out you. <laughs> that's going to punch the fuck out you and cause you trauma, for which you'll need a therapist. And he's going to ask you to relive your trauma every fucking day and charge you $1,000 an hour. So I think I need to go ahead and replace this brake booster. Women be like, well, go ahead. Thank you for saving my life. <laughs> and don't don't Middle Eastern mechanics. They always hit that. They they hit you with the. What's something they be replaced? It be something alias as fuck. Like a steering shaft. You be like a steering shaft. Get on that gun. That You like. And be, you be like, how much? They always hit you with that bullshit. They be like, normally, normally, <laughs> it's $2 million. <laughs> normally, it's $2 million. But for you, for you, we could do it for 3000 It's like, and this is what, this is, this is what happens in politics too. It's like, they do something so egregious or just throw a number out there that's so fucking wild that when you hear the actual number that's still wild as fuck, you'll be glad to hear it and you'll go for it. That's just like, fellas, you ever, you know, dated a woman, you be like, how many kids you got? She'd be like, I, I got five kids. And you sit there and she'd be like, I'm just playing. I only got three kids. And you'd be like, whew, at least she doesn't have five. And then you tell your friend and your friend, like, yo, three kids? That's still a lot of kids. And then your friend telling you, well, at least she doesn't have five. Calm yourself. I'm tall, I'm saying too much. I'm saying too much, bro. Nah, they did put it here. <laughs> Niggas go to mechanics and out of this. Don't reveal our secrets. And it'd be a car, it'd be a teenager, it'd be a college guy in there. He gotta upsell you some shit. Yeah, that they sell you a whole new vehicle. You go in there, flat tire, your tire, boom, tire bar. Let me roll in this gas station. You in the waiting room, they come out, we, we, we patched your tire. But the car will explode if it leaves this shop. If you want us to fix it, you don't have to get it fixed here. They make you, they make you want it too. They make you want it, don't they? You know, like the government, Fauci, COVID, they make you want it. They be like, yo, you don't have to. You don't have, All I'm saying is, if you were to, you know, leave here and go down the street, you could explode. And then you will die. And then your kids will grow up without parents. Because the other parent will kill themselves because you're not around. Now your kids are in foster care getting beat to death. Then they get adopted. Now they have daddy and mommy issues. Now your whole line, your whole lineage, your whole lineage, nigga, yeah, will be fucking worsome. They hit you with a word you never heard before. Your whole lineage is going to be worsome. If you don't, let me repair this. You'd be like, how much? $5,000. You'd be like, nigga, I can get a new car for that. You could. But when you get a new car, that will also explode. I have to fix this problem specifically. 
People's lives are on the line. They hit you with that shit too. People's lives are on the line. It's not about you. <laughs> you be like, go ahead. Hey, you fix my shit. I don't want my lineage to be worse, some nigga. You got a worse some lineage. Nigga, my offspring will be retarded. All of them. Yes. And then they keep your car for like three weeks and don't really do shit to it. They just replace like a fucking. <laughs> they replace the fucking battery terminals and be like, see, it's working better now. It's did you hear it start up? I fixed it. I saved your lineage. That'll be five million dollars. Cash or credit. With the little card reader, <laughs> you sit there. And, and men, to tell you the truth, men get fucked over just as much, if not more, than women do. Because half the time, the women sit there, they know what they're doing. They go to the shop with a little, with that little clip. Men just show up at the shop like, yo, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with it. That's the worst thing to say to any mechanic. Don't go nowhere and be like, I don't know what's wrong with it. Nigga, they will find that shit becomes the PCR test. They will find something. And I promise you that something will be expensive. You just show up at a, at a shop like, yo, it is. It kind of just cut off on me while driving. Get on YouTube, research, do something. Have an idea. Or lie and be like, yo, I had a homie, you know, he, he works at a Hyundai dealership. He looked at it. He was like, oh, yeah, this, that, and the third, you know. This is what, you know, have an idea. Don't just be like, here, take it. I don't know what's wrong with it. Diagnose it. Do everything, you know. If people that, that, and not all mechanics are like this. I'm, but you gonna get a couple of it. You be like, what's wrong with it? Nigga, everything is wrong with it. I can't believe you didn't die sooner. Look at this piece of shit you left in our shop. You be like, well, what's wrong with it? Nigga, you need a whole, you ever show up to pick up your shit and it's a whole new vehicle? You be like, yo, where my shit at? They be like, this is your shit. <laughs> be like, yo, what, what the fuck? And we, we had to get you a new vehicle. That'll be five million dollars. <laughs> Feel like I didn't authorize that. Well, that was the only way we was gonna fix the problem. We fucking fixed the problem, didn't we? <laughs> and it's women in the corner like that's such good mechanics there. <laughs> I love mechanics, man. But they, they got that bullshit with them. That's why I started the came one. Instead of complaining about this shit like that. I start I learned, I did my research. I acquired the knowledge necessary. The tools are the hardest part. Fuck the knowledge, nigga. The tools. The tool the tools will put you in debt. 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 That's why mechanics do what they do, because they're in debt. They have to fuck you over. It's almost like having a gun to your head. Well, if I don't do this, I hate to do this, but I have to charge you $5 million to change your headlight because I'm in debt. <laughs> <laughs> and the snapple guy wants his money next time he comes over. <laughs> debt. What a mechanic said. You in debt. That's why I say the best mechanic to be is in business for yourself, a mobile mechanic or a diagnostician. You just go work at a dealer. 
or go work at a gas stations actually pay better sometimes it depends on what system you're on flat rate hourly the lube shop them niggas make like eleven dollars an hour and have to up and have to lie you have to lie And it, every shop you go, every shop you go to or you work at has that one diva, the master mechanic, the guy with all the certificates. He typically makes that type of face. You don't ask him for nothing. You'd be like, yo, I'm have, I need help with figuring out this timing on this GM uh, model V. He just sitting there. You be like, yo, I'm good, bro. I f never mind, nigga. <laughs> then you gotta pay for the software to figure out how to fix this sh debt, bro. That's a hard job, bro. Shout out to the mechanics, though. There's two sides of that struggle: the customer and the nigga doing the work. And then there's management. There's fucking everybody over, just both sides. You need to hurry up and get this vehicle out of here. The customer is waiting. You like, will you tell the customer go suck a dick while I figure this shit out? You just fucking dropped it off in my fucking bay. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with this. The customer sitting there, oh, they're so, they're so nice with me and they're like family. Meanwhile, the mechanic in the back cussing that bitch out. You be like, why you keep going to the dealer? Because they're like family and I know them and I've been coming here for five years. And all you do is wait for your vehicle to get ready. The service advisor, the niggas sitting at the people, the people that's dressed well, they come be like, oh, your car's coming right out. He goes to the back. What the fuck is taking you so long? The mechanic is like, nigga, I'm the engine is out. <laughs> hood up radiator ac condenser out front fascia gone engine out transmission on the floor you're like yo i don't know what the fuck is wrong with her car but you need to tell her this shit ain't gonna be done today the part you gotta go to the parts counter the parts people don't know what the fuck they're doing they're ordering parts from delco line you're like yo who, where the fuck are my parts they be like oh we ordered them they were supposed to be here an hour ago the people delivering the parts to the shop delivered it to the wrong shop now that shit's gonna be tomorrow and the chick waiting out front oh that, i love it coming here then they lied to her they're like oh yeah he'll be done in a couple minutes just hang tight is anybody coming to pick you up? Maybe somebody should come pick you up. <laughs> the mechanics back there throwing tools. <laughs> Throw the mechanics in the back. Meanwhile, throwing tools, fighting other mechanics, arguing over whose 10 millimeter socket is this. It's like I got the gray pneumatic socket set to be different. Nigga, you should stick to snap on. At least I know what's mine and what's yours, but you had to go and get that gray pneumatic shit, didn't you? Y'all got that same sunny socket set. You be like, hold on, nigga, where my shit? You put your shit right here, went to the bathroom, came back, that shit gone. The mechanic in the next bay working on some shit whistling. You're like, nigga, that's my socket on your impact wrench. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> you done lost all your sockets. You lost all your 10 millimeter sockets because every time you lost one, you told yourself you was going to order another one the next day but didn't.
The only person you can ask is the master tech. He's a diva. He don't share shit. <laughs> and he makes a lot more than you. And he thinks he's better than you. <laughs> and, he, and he get the best paying jobs. They roll it right in there to him. He get all the high paying shit. You get the little cheap shit that he don't want to do. <laughs> so now you sitting there like, fuck Bear King Garage. He told me I should become a mechanic. Fuck that nigga. I quit. Nah, nigga, it's not the end. Go get a van. Pack it. Pack it with tools. And go help people. Those people will appreciate you. Charge them. Be fair. Don't be too generous. Those people will tell other people, next thing you know, you got a fucking business. Next thing you know, you work for yourself. Next thing you know, you could do shit. Like employ your nephews. You know, like, I need help. I'm going out here a couple jobs, you know. You can start small and get big. Then get a garage. You know, shit like that. Get a garage. Move out of that apartment. Now you're making enough money. Go get, you know, get something that got a garage. Or get a driveway at least. Put a little tent up. Get you an engine crane from Harbor Freight. You don't need nothing expensive or fancy. Do engine work. It pays good. And, it, and it's simple. People want to make it more complicated than what it is. It's simple. All the information is right out. You don't even need to go to school. A lot of the information you can learn on YouTube. You know, make money. Get helpers. Employ people in your neighborhood. Like, hey. You come over and help. You don't have to employ you. You help me out. Give you a couple hundred for the day's worth of work. You know. Encourage the kids around you. They seem like, I just made a couple hundred dollars helping Mr. So-and-so across the street out. Then they see you working. They're going to want to work like that. You know. Shit like that. Whether you want to get a license or not is up to you. you know, I ain't gonna, we ain't going to speak on that, but it can be done. Just be honest. Be a man of integrity. Be a man of your word. And be willing to claim your mistakes. Like, yeah, I fucked up. I did that, dog. People are like, yo, he honest. People already feel like mechanics aren't honest. Just be honest. And never do never bite off more than you could chew and don't tell people a set time i've learned this you'd be like oh oh what it'd be something simple too it'd be like yo i got this i got you know the serpentine belt you know a little belt it's up front there's a lot of space to get to it you're like oh give 15 minutes you got a little serpentine belt tool you know oem tools and shit you know nigga three hours later <laughs> yo hey You ain't gonna believe this shit, bro. You know, don't, don't give people a set time. You fuck yourself over when you do that. But you have to somewhat know the job so you can charge appropriately. YouTube is also great for this. I mean, it's out there. It's free. It's out there. It's not rocket science. And that's the best mechanic to be. Then, then when you do get your brick and mortar shop, you already going to have a name and a reputation. Wherever you go, people will travel. Because people who find good mechanics, they keep them. Because they feel like mechanics aren't honest. So if you move out of state nine times out of ten, they'll travel to have you work on their vehicle. Whether it's the hot rod, he'll put it on a trailer, drop it off to you. The family van. Well, that's just simple. But yeah, right now, yeah, dealerships and and no, they don't no. Mm -mm. And then it's all that pressure on you to get like fancy 
name brand tools so you go into debt just to look good and you don't even really know what the fuck you're doing you just got the fancy tools you know i seen a lot of that too you be like damn he got it going he got snap on everything he's in a lot of debt and he still don't even know how to operate his code reader He's asking the other mechanic. He's asking that nigga for help. Because <laughs> you want to look good. What, that wasn't even, what the fuck was I talking about? That wasn't even what I was trying to talk about today. Oh, the wood chipper. Yeah, it's great to use when, when you need to relieve stress. Just fire up the wood chipper and feed it feels good somebody said it does sound tiring yeah that that goes for it it, it is tiring it is and the fleet mechanics have it better than you know the garage and Cause they work on like company vehicles which is what i was doing they work on company shit. so you don't have to deal with individual personalities a bunch of people running in and out usually there's a, a specified budget for something so if you say hey we need this part and they come in with some cheap shit, you know you'd be like no let's just get the oem shit, so we don't have to modify anything you know they're more you know you can you know but some customers they be like oh, we yeah, i can't do that and then people make allowances for that type of behavior and just come at you with cheap shit and expect you to install it and then it don't fit right you have to do extra shit to try to make it work you get frustrated you throw more tools you lose customers you know Somebody said OEM, original equipment manufacturer. Like for instance, like Chevy, Cadillac, GM, GMC. Their parts manufacturer is Delco line, AC Delco, or GM parts. Chrysler products, Mopar. If the box or bag doesn't say Mopar for Chrysler, You know, shit like that. It usually costs more, but it, it, it's really worth it. But some, sometimes it's not, though. Like, sometimes aftermarket is made better than the original shit. Sometimes it's stronger. Or something may have been done to your vehicle, which requires aftermarket parts. You know, y'all know the differences, but majority of the times yeah oh yeah you don't have to worry about rewiring shit trying to get shit to fit that's not supposed to fit getting frustrated didn't and that's how you lose customers when you get frustrated because then you get the cussing and yelling understandably so and then your customers say some stupid shit and then you be like yo look bitch you don't know how my day has gone Working on your fucking Nissan Altima. Oh, oh, he's so aggressive. You ever cuss out a cusser? How come you're not finished yet? Look, bitch, I'm not finished because your vehicle is a piece of shit, okay? And since we're talking about pieces of shit, you're also a piece of shit, you cheap bitch. You're not paying me enough for this shit, okay? Give me a couple hours and I'm sure I can figure I'm just bear with me. Now give me my vehicle. I'm gonna go somewhere that's gonna fuck me over more politely. You know, people wanna be fucked over politely, you know. So they'll take, you know, their car away from you and then go to go to Sears and deal with the Pakistani people. 
Thank you for coming to see it. Would you like to change your power steering pump? And also, you need all the vehicle. Well, yes, because you're a lot nicer to me than the mechanic that just cussed me out for having a Nissan Altima. Oh, no, he don't ever do that. Thank you for coming to Hachi's Auto Repair. It is it me or have y'all noticed a lot of foreign businesses they love that american flag they'll put that america they, they the most patriot and don't speak no english a lot of mexican shops are like they have a flag everywhere nigga just trying to blend in blend in american flag patriotism good job boys and then you walk in the shop and it's a bunch of mexicans you're like wait a minute nigga what They'd be like, thank you for coming. <laughs> I'm now I'm going to rebuild your brake pad. Your brake pad, I, I fix it. I don't replace it. I fix it. Thank you for coming. Hey, Carlos. Get the brake pad refurbisher out here. They always got a guy named Carlos. And Chewy. Hey, Chewy. Go and get Gato. Carlos, come help me move this car. You see like five Mexicans pushing a Nissan Altima into the bay because that bitch won't start. And you know, they're like super short too, you know. <laughs> oh, and I don't know who needs to hear this, but never push a vehicle from the back by the tail light. There's a good chance you're going to break it. And you're going to have to pay for it. This sounds like common sense, but I've seen it happen too many times to not say something about it. Niggas be like, help me. It won't start. We got to push it in the bay. Niggas get back there. <laughs> They'll be like, oops. They'll be like, Carlos, what did you do? Fuck, go and get Chewy. Hey, Chewy, Cato, come here. Look what Carlos did, eh? Go sit in the corner and eat your burrito. You fucking chupacabra. Carlos, he walk up. That's why people get mad at Scotty Kilmer. Cause Scotty Kilmer, Scotty Kilmer will work on your shit make a video of him working on your shit and then talk shit about the shit you drive while working on it and making a video of it and then you see the video and like damn bro you went in on my vehicle i thought you were nice that's what every mechanic does <laughs> well, nigga we hate your vehicle hate don't nobody want to work on that shit for real. That shit rusted the fuck down. Neglected. Niggas hate working on neglected vehicles. <laughs> you be like, bro. Bro, this shit's so fucked up, bro. You know it's fucked up. If you ever been to the shop and they have a glass where you can see what's going on in the back. You know it's fucked up when you look through the glass to see the progress on your vehicle and the mechanic, the mechanic calls, he does some shit like this. And you see the other mechanic. That way your heart sink, you like, oh shit. That shit looks expensive and I don't even know what the fuck it is. <laughs> you like, yo, that shit look expensive. I don't even know what the fuck it is. This shit already out of my budget. Somebody said, who else here screaming? It's kids over there playing in the field.
Somebody said she's dying, bro. Nah, they're beating each other up. It's healthy. Somebody said his neighbors are the Bidens. Who, Mr. President, what do you think about the GOP? What did the GOP do? The GOP came out and was like, we, we're fighting back against these fucking vaccine. What do you think about the GOP fighting back against your vaccine mandates? Well, for, hold on. First of all, it, it become, it come, when it comes down to patriotism, I had a diaper. <laughs> I was wearing a diaper at one point in the interview. <laughs> I was wearing a diaper at one point in the interview. I think a little soggy now. I don't. It's the sun, that because he always looked like the sun. The sun is it? Is the sun in this bitch or what? It's bright. I don't even remember the question. Jill, what pill was I supposed to take? Did you put it in the pill box? They were supposed. Hand me my fucking Ray Bands, bitch. <laughs> this fucking sun is killing me, Jill. Bitch, hand me my ray bands. <laughs> bitch, hand me my dog, the bounty hunters. What did bitch say again? <laughs> That's a funny motherfucker, bro. Hand me my dog, the bounty hunters. Right now, bitch. All right, now what did bitch talking? What? Why? The, the GOP did what, bitch? Ben Shapiro, fuck you. What did Joe Biden came out with a Ben Shapiro diss track. First off, fuck you. Wait a minute. I work for your people, don't I? Well, Jill, where the fuck are my glasses at? I can't. Are we having chicken tendies tonight for dinner with dipping sauce? I need applesauce. Oh, I know it. Gene, somebody said, have you ever heard of King Face? It sounds familiar. All I know, I heard uh, Shapiro on Fox News. Well, actually, folks, okay? So what happened is the Biden administration is doing something completely unconstitutional, and we're going to fight this. Now, I have always told my audience that they need to take their vaccines. My Ben Shapiro ain't right without the small hat. Hold on. Hold on, I gotta go. My Ben Shapiro ain't right without the small hat. Well, actually, folks, I, I actually, the Biden administration is doing something completely unconstitutional. And right now, I told them that we will sue. Now, once the order comes out, we'll find out what we are suing over. But right now, I told my audience that they need to take the vaccine, and they need to take the vaccine because it is good, okay? I've always told my audience this. He come out with some bull. I told you, it's cookies and bubbles. Did It's hope. It's getting you to settle for more bullshit. Like, who can't see through this bullshit? Like, the people designed to fail. And everybody, yes. A bunch of people who've already taken the thing you've sworn you weren't going to take coming to defend you better than you can. That's what you're waiting on. Like, it sounds good. But it's like, just like Ron DeSantis, yeah, the schools can't force people to wear masks. And the judge just, that shit out of here, nigga. And you're like, damn, well, what can these niggas do? The judge, look at it fuck is you talking about nigga wear that fucking mask cuz mask up nigga fuck Ron DeSantis the judge was like fuck Ron DeSantis talking about the judge went Tupac on that nigga. wear that mask nigga I was like damn everybody's like at least he tried I'm like niggas don't make no fucking progress I'm like, damn, where's the progress? It's just like when the Maryland governor, 
who's supposedly conservative, came out against the $15 an hour minimum wage thing. And he was like, no, we won't do it. The General Assembly was like, we don't know who the fuck he talking to, but yeah, 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 that's an order. Nigga, every year, that's why Maryland's so fucked up. Like, it's hard to find good work in Maryland. It's like, yo, people, oh, it's like the labor pool is better in Virginia. But as soon as you go across the street to Maryland, nobody knows what the fuck they're doing. And they're being paid a lot more for not knowing shit. The customer service in Maryland is terrible. Not all of Maryland. Let me specify. Prince George's County. Your customer service is dumpster juice. Montgomery County. There's nothing but Mexicans. We don't even speak the same language no more. Anne Arundel County. Calvert County is a little bit better. St. Mary's County, a little bit better. You getting into the Amish country now, St. Mary's. Down there by Hollywood and shit, Lusby. But this shit around D.C., no, niggas be like, I'll drive to Virginia to order some shit. Fuck y'all. They, have you seen the Magic Johnson theaters out there? Like, who the fuck? It'd be one chick out there with a purse on one hand, cigarette between the just not doing shit. And the governor came out, yeah, we're going to raise the minimum wage like a dollar every year for the next five years until we hit the desired minimum wage. And then Montgomery County was like, fuck that. We're already going to do that. 15. <laughs> so I was like, damn, do the governors, what are you niggas good for? It's like, what are the governors good for? I don't know, that politics shit designed to give you hope, keep you going around in circles, give you more hope. Now you feel like the walls are closing in. Up, oh, let's sprinkle in some hope. But see, they're going to help us. They're finally going to help us. Somebody said PG County corrupt like Baltimore. Bro, ba I forgot Baltimore County. That's a given. But yeah, PG County... Damn. They're going to help us. I'm going to help the people. I'm going to wear my small hat proudly and I'm going to help the people. Now Ben Shapiro is a hero. Oh, that shit ran. You know, and it's like, it, uh, we go through this every other week from no hope, hope. A little bit of hope. Move the needle. Let's say something outrageous. That gets challenged. Then we do the less outrageous thing that is still very outrageous, but not as outrageous. Give them more hope. Squeeze them. Now let go. Squeeze them again. Let them go. <laughs> Rock them to sleep. Now wake them up. Put them back to sleep. Wake them up. Squeeze them. Relieve tension. Pressure relief valve. Give them hope. Squeeze them again. Give them more hope. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. Leave it to beavers. You know? All right, let me finish these wood chips.
Let me, I'm about, I'm, I'm about to go finish these wood chips. Y'all distracting me. Y'all seriously distracting me, though. 